Hello, it's me again, Russell, CRI or Certified Ross Instructor living in Milton Keynes in the UK. And what I want to do today is go over the Bob Ross painting equipment, the brushes predominantly and the knives. Um, <clears throat> these brushes, the Bob Ross brushes, are like the paints made to a very strict criteria and specification so that they can give you the best chance of getting the best, uh, getting the best out of your Bob Ross wet and wet painting techniques. Ordinary brushes just won't do it. They won't give you that beautiful effect. And later on in another video, I will tell you how you could do what Bob Ross did in the early days. And that is make your own videos for something you bought maybe from a hardware store, a home improvement store, or a DIY store. But let's get on with the Bob Ross paintbrushes. As I say, made to a st very strict criteria to give you the best effects. The two inch brush, two inches wide. Look at it edge on and you see it's got a slight curve over it. The side bristles are slightly smaller than the middle bristles. This makes it easier, believe it or not, to um, draw to a chisel to get a chisel edge out of it with plenty of paint when you might be painting trees. Similarly, it gives it makes it easier to splay the bristles out by digging the paint into the palette, by digging the brush into the paint on the palette to give you a stipple effect for, for things such as grass. The two inch brush. The one inch brush, a slightly shorter version, still the same cross section you see, slightly curved, bristles at the side slightly shorter. Now, funnily enough, oh, let's go on to the knife. This is the main Bob Ross knife, the large knife. It's nice springy steel, almost unbreakable, but I wouldn't say completely unbreakable. I told somebody once you could use as much pressure on it as you like, it won't break. I use as much pressure on it to demonstrate it, twang, away it went. Okay, now, the dimensions of, the, of this knife are actually quite cute because the length here, the length here ties in with the length of the eaves on one of his huts. Makes it easy just to go scrape, scrape, and there you've made the eaves on one of his huts. It's also scrape and you've made the end wall of the hut. This bit here is actually the width for the door of the hut. You can go scrape and you've done your door. And of course, the knife is used to put the snow on the mountains. You hold it, you utilize the 3F rule. The 3F rule is hold it between the forefinger and the thumb. And you wish, it, wish the paint down, the titanium weight paint down, and make the mountains. There is a smaller cousin for more fine detailed work. Same specification, different shape, smaller shape, but for fine detail work. Look at this fan brush. Look at the size of it. Look at the curve on it. This is a monster of a fan brush and it's very stiff bristle. It's very stiff bristle. Yeah. Used for waves, used for those happy little trees, used for clouds, um, used for some quite miserable trees as well. And it also has a smaller cousin. Smaller fan brush. The script liner brush used for fine detail, used for mixing paint with thinner to a very to a very runny consistency and used wiggle 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 to paint to paint in branches and twigs. Also used at the end of the day for signing your signature on your painting. Also used for the little rivulets of fil of foam that you get in waves and maybe along the top of the waves as well. Now this brush, the two inch brush, led to another brush called the oval brush. Now, one thing that Bob does is he, he uses paint on the corner of the brush, just the corner of the brush, to paint in clumps of leaves on trees. People said they just could, it was too difficult to do. They just couldn't get the knack. So he produced this brush, the oval brush. Look at that big curve on the top. Look at the big curve over the top. Once again, very, very much shorter bristles on the side makes it a lot easier to do bushes and clusters of uh, leaves on trees. The one inch brush. <clears throat> now when Bob uses, Bob uses the one inch brush in his early videos to make bushes and he does it in a way which isn't very clear. And that, uh, and what he does actually is he gets liquid white and paint and he pulls it through like that so you end up with this side curve, he then turns it round and lightly touches the canvas. 
once again people said that it was a bit too difficult it took a lot of uh, took a lot of practice to get and the whole idea of the bob ross te technique is that you don't need skill so he produced this it looks like another one inch brush it's actually a round brush look at the way it's cut very big circle very big curve on the top this is the one inch brush once again the bristles down the side are shorter and the way you load the brush and the way you apply the brush to the canvas gives you some lovely bush effects so that's actually not the one inch that's the half size brown round half size round and that's the full size round we then have the filbert brush really a form of very small oval brush and this is used in waves to um, clean the, the, the eye of the wave and it's also used when double loaded with paint to put rocks into riverbeds and onto the onto the coastline of a seascape it's because in his painting oriental falls bob uses it to put slight, to make little bonsai tree type clusters of leaves and finally part way through he came up with this the soft blender in some of it, in his earlier videos he would use a clean brush like this to blend especially the clouds but later on he came up with this very very soft blender brush very soft very fine which did a much better job the only problem with this brush is that uh, it's only got a life of, in any painting of about two or three uses because then the bristles start getting clogged with paint so then you have to clean the brush and the, once you've cleaned the brush this particular brush and this brush only you can't use it again until it is completely and utterly dried out okay so that's worth knowing so there we have it eleven of the eleven bob ross paintbrushes and knives and don't forget that in a later video i'll show you how you can do what he did in the early days and that is modify things you buy from a home improvement store to give you a Bob Ross like effect. OK, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to it and I'll see you again soon. Many thanks. Bye bye.